Hey guys, my name is Luke O'Connell and today we are going to be looking at an animal which has been coined perhaps one of the coolest names ever given to an animal, living or dead. Today we are going to be looking at a pterosaur that was discovered in 2009 in Transylvania and this is a terrifying animal that goes by the name of Dracula. Now, while the name may conjure up ghastly images of a vampiric pterosaur sucking the blood of its victims, which actually could be something that exists, but that is a topic for another episode. Dracula was a very, very different animal. And quite a deal scarier. It belongs to a family of pterosaurs known as the Asdarkids. And these weren't the usual pterosaurs that we tend to think of when the name comes up of these animals. When you think of the name pterosaur, generally what you think of as huge flying reptiles, something akin to a pteranodon. Huge is an understatement for these animals. Dracula itself was estimated to have possibly had a wingspan of 8 to 9 meters. That is roughly the same wingspan as a World War II fighter plane. This was a huge animal. As dark kids have populated quite a bit of the world, such as North America, South America, and even Africa, and they came in many shapes and forms, some smaller than others, and some absolute giants like Dracula. But the funny thing about Transylvania and that general area is that there's been three discoveries of gigantic pterosaurs in the region. There's Hatsigopteryx, which is a more famous one, a titanic flying creature similar to Dracula. There's Dracula itself, and then there's also the discovery of a new pterosaur, which was potentially even bigger than the other two, or at least his jawbone was believed to be bigger, being one of the largest pterosaur jawbones ever discovered. And this poses the question, why was there such a large concentration of large, flying, predatory pterosaurs in one region? Well, that probably has to do with the environment and the other animals that were in that time and region. Transylvania, at that time, was actually an archipelago, which is a group of islands. And the animals that lived on these islands were much smaller than, say, relatives of these animals found in the rest of the world. There were sauropods on these islands, but most of them only grew to roughly the size of a pony. There was also landbound predators at the time on the island, but these were small, troodontid type predators. This is known as island dwarfism. Basically, in a nutshell, this means that there is not enough resources such as food, water, and space on the island for large animals to thrive. So generally, smaller animals do better, and large animals that find themselves stranded on these smaller land masses over time may evolve to be smaller. However, this rule generally did not affect animals that could take to the air, as they had a much wider range to work with. A huge gap in the ecosystem has been left for a large predator to fill. So this allowed predators like Hatsigopteryx and Dracula to evolve. Dracula seems to have evolutionary adaptions that would have allowed it to perhaps be a more effective ground hunter than an airborne hunter. Perhaps one method within which Dracula would search for prey is that it would soar through the skies over Transylvania using its keen eyes to spot prey in the open prairies of prehistoric Transylvania. Once it spotted something, it would perhaps swoop down on land, and from there, it would perhaps stalk its prey or pursue it on foot, folding its front wings so that they would become basically legs that would allow it to move through the foliage of the time. Dracula had a relatively short and stocky neck when compared to other as dark pterosaurs from across the world, and this perhaps may have aided it in moving along the ground. Having that shorter neck may have allowed it to move to foliage at an easier rate. It also possibly allowed the neck to be stronger. Perhaps this was an evolutionary trait that allowed it to pick up animals, say something the size of a small sauropod. And this is most likely what Dracula hunted. It probably preyed on the dinosaurs of the region. It is quite hard to imagine an animal that is capable of flight but as tall as a giraffe, stalking through the reeds and looking for prey. It is a terrifying idea, but one that would have been amazing to see. Dracula has not been given a scientific name yet, although there is a paper set to come out later on in the year that should explain more about the animal. For now, what we have is a huge, short-necked, as darkened pterosaur that would have been one of the top predators of this region, moving between islands utterly undisputed and hunting any prey that it could get down its throat. It is a terrifying image that trumps even the most well-done cape clad vampire trying to suck the neck of someone. I mean, who knows what other amazing facts could come to life about this amazing animal. It is still a relatively new discovery. 
So when more research is done, I think we'll have an even clearer picture as to what this creature was. And already we have a very impressive image of a top predator pterosaur, which is something that is not very commonly found. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will be making this into a regular series where I'll discuss different topics of paleontology every week, be that happenings of the modern world of paleontology or highlighting different eras of prehistoric creatures from week to week. There is an endless array of creatures and topics to talk about. And so stay tuned for more. Thank you for watching.